up everybody it's Vin Diesel here with Sportsman's Warehouse we're gonna be tying up a zebra midge and a few variations let's go ahead and get started with our materials we got a TMC 2488 this is a size 16 I usually fish them in 16s 18s 14s we've got a brass bead you could also be using a um, tungsten bead or also a glass bead and then we're going to be using some UTC 70 denier in black the color of the thread will dictate the underbody of this fly and we're going to be using some brassy um, UTC wire and copper. This is one of my favorite color combinations. And to seal the deal, we're going to be using some Loon Flow. You could also use Loon Thin or any sort of thin resin uh, that we can cure with a UV light. So let's go ahead and get started. And like I said, this is the most basic pattern um, that I have that I think I've caught more fish on. Uh, this seems to just be an ultra fishy pattern, and they, you know, it catches fish when nothing else does, and so. A little trick here to putting the uh, the bead on uh, the hook when it's uh, these smaller hooks is put it in like I'm showing you here and then of course we got some tweezers here and I'm going to put the smaller hole in first that way uh, the concave on the back side we're able to shove some thread in there and um, we'll go ahead and invert this at a slight angle so that the the bead is down because we're going to be tying our thread into that bend and so I kind of want it to be exposed now let's go ahead and get started with our thread right here behind the bead and I'm going to use my tag in to roll my wraps so they're touching. And I'm going to do about five to seven wraps and then work my way back up towards the bead going back over what we just did. And don't cut off your tag in because we're going to work our way back down. We're going to jump off our previous wraps and then go about five to seven more wraps right into the bend and then we'll go work our way back up. Now what we're doing is we're building a taper using the thread. Now you're thinking that didn't really build a taper, but it, it did. And so now we can cut this tag end out. Just go ahead and cut it as close as you can. And then we're going to be using our uh, copper wire here. And a little trick I use is I usually just shove the very, very tip of this wire into that big concave. So I kind of push it up, shove that wire in. And for some reason, I just think that secures it better. It just gives a little bit of a cleaner finish. And I'm going to keep this wire on the top of the shank with touching wraps as I work down. And we're going to use this wire just like we did our tag end. And we're going to use it to have the, the thread slide into the previous wrap. So you can see I'm holding that wire at about a 30 degree off and how it just naturally slides that thread into the previous wraps. And we're going to work our way down well into the bend. Um, go further than you might think you will. We, we don't want to get into the hook point. We're not going all the way, but uh, we're going to go ahead and just work our way down. And so we'll get to about this point right there, and then I'll just use my best of my ability, touching wraps to work my way back up to the bead. And we're just taking our time. If you see something shiny, go ahead and reverse your wraps and then go back over it. But just work your way with the best of your ability, touching wraps all the way up. If one or two are not perfect, it's not going to matter because we're going to be covering this in some resin. And I'll go ahead and do just a single turn whip finish. You could also do a half hitch because we're going to be wrapping this wire. And I'm just going to grab it, do a full wrap around, and then we're going to segment this body with the wraps being a little t uh, closer back here towards the, the tail of this fly. And then we will... Um, open those up and just try and keep them as consistent as possible um, you know if one of them's off by a, a 64th of an inch I don't think the fish are going to care but if you you know have them squumpus um, they may or may not and then I always do a full turn right there behind the bead and we'll go ahead and do some wraps behind the wire and in front of the wire so we can secure it and then we will go ahead and just use some flush cutters if I get them turned the right way I'll flip them over and just flush cut it out. You could also do a wire spin to get that off and just use your fingernail to get that wire down in there and then do a couple turns over that so we don't have a sharp pony exposed and then we're just going to do a, a, a simple whip finish and uh, that is pretty much the fly besides we're going to make it ultra durable with some UV resin. So let's go ahead and do just a three turn whip finish here making sure we kind of close that gap right there between the the last wire wraps I'm gonna do a second one I've got a little bit of spacing and if you cover that wire it doesn't matter you could also put on maybe potentially a hot spot collar at this point but we'll go ahead and trim that thread out and then we're going to resin this body now the reason I like this uh, this this thinner resin here is I'm just gonna put a small drop here and then use the tip to kinda of spread it around you wanna make sure you work it all the way around 
um, rotate your vise uh, upside down, maybe put a little bit more. You don't want it dripping, you don't want to put too much, but you don't want to put too little. I use my finger to wipe off the excess, just make sure you don't cure it on your finger. And then we'll just do a 360 degree rotation here, and that's a zebra midge. Uh, this is one of my most popular, favorite go-to color combinations. Another one is where I use a red body with a white wire or silver wire and a silver bead, but that's pretty much the fly. Super fast, super easy, it catches fish. However, there are a ton of variations of this pattern, and we're going to go into some of those. So here we go, we step back. This is what I call the wire hot spot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the wire, instead of going up it, I'm going to wrap three turns down. So what we just did is we created a wire hot spot there at the rear, and then I'll jump up to the body and then continue spiraling just like we did our previous um, fly, um, the traditional zebra midge, and we'll just segment that body. So you can see right there towards the rear, we've got a wire hot spot. You could also tie in a separate thread and do it with a thread hot spot. I just found the wire adds that extra flash and then we'll just there you go there's a wire hotspot zebra midge pretty simple pretty effective now this one is good adding a little bit of a wing to it um, you can use multiple materials I like to use crystal flash I just take a single strand fold it over itself multiple times so we've got about four strands coming off the back I'll pinch it hold it on the top grasp it down and you can use different colors of crystal flash here you could use um, um, CDC you could even use hackle, you could even use a little bit of dubbing, but I just folded it over itself. We've got a really nice little wing there, and I'll go ahead and just trim that off. I'll just kind of hold it up at a, a 30 degree angle, just like we did our wire and thread, and cut it so they're not all even. And now we've created a spot here that I could add potentially some uh, some peacock, do some wraps around there. That's one of my more favorite um, uh, variations of this. Uh, a little bit more advanced to work with peacock or you can just grab some ice dub or your favorite dubbing in different color combinations um, this uh, this golden um, brown has been a, a really good one for me you don't need a lot this is a small fly um, I also use a lot of peacock and pinks and orange um, I, I tie some with reds I haven't had the best of luck but you could uh, do blue that seems to be one of my more popular uh, go-to uh, colors this past uh, year and then we just create a nice little ice dub collar here not using a lot of uh, material and ice dub comes in tons of different colors and so we got a little wing there and also a little hot spot and so this is another variation a little more complicated you're adding more materials um, but you can see here the thread body could be changed, the wire could be changed, the crystal flash could be changed, the bead could be changed, and the dubbing could be changed. So there's, so there's so many variations from the most basic pattern to this. And now I'm going to show you one last one, and this is adding a little shuck out the back, a little, a little hot spot tail. And I, I'm using the same crystal flash for this. You could also use um, some sort of a, a, a thread, um, you could use uh, floss, you could use uh, uh, glow bright. I mean the materials are endless that you can use for this. You can even get some of the threads that are a little bit more shiny and sparkly and fray them once they come out. Um, so you can see the problem with doing this in this crystal flash, I've got four strands there so I've created a little bit of a hump. Taper is key and so then I want to build up the body a little bit thicker. So this is going to be a little bit of a a beefier um, zebra midge, not as skinny, and so we'll just work our way up and make sure you've got a slight taper to that. And uh, like I said, we're going to segment it with that brassy wire, and that's another thing you can swap out is the wire color. So combinations are endless with this, and you can see that first wire wrap. You just want to make sure you get the tail oriented how you want it, and then from there you're just repeating the process of of what we've done. Um, all the way up. So there's tons of different variations for this pattern. Tie them up in a bunch of different colors, a bunch of different sizes, and hopefully you get out, fish them, and you, you pierce some lips. Because like I said, I've caught more fish on this simple pattern than many of my more complicated ones that you know I spend a lot more time on. But for some reason, the fish just love these zebra midges. So make sure you got plenty in your box. You can fish them as a dropper off a hopper or tons of different ways of fishing these as well so hope they uh, pierce some lips for you and uh, thanks for watching this video